Hello, I come to you wearing Noelle's second best red and my first best, thanks to my friend Dana, to talk Rouge by Mona Awad. Don't know what the heck I'm talking about there? Read Rouge by Mona Awad. Now this is only my second novel after Bunny. I have my copy of All's Well on the shelf behind me where you can't see it, but I have not yet gotten to it. But like many, I was really compelled by just how weird Bunny was. And so I went into this novel expecting it to be weird, but it again defied my expectations of what I thought I was going to go in getting. And this kind of fits in with books we've already talked about this year, like Natural Beauty and The Glow in its exploration of beauty culture and kind of the online beauty culture as well. And there are even two more books that came out this year that I have my eye on that I haven't gotten to yet that I also think are going to explore similar themes. And so I find it really fascinating that this is definitely something that we are interested in exploring right now. And I think it makes sense because we've seen this really rise of beauty culture, especially online, and how that's informing our sense of self in the current moment. And so we have that coupled with the blurb describing this as Snow White meets Get Out and having a cult element because we're following our protagonist Belle as she's going back to California from Canada because her mother has maybe mysteriously drowned and she has to deal with the death of her mother and her relationship with her mother is incredibly complicated. So I went into this interested in and that exploration of beauty and beauty culture, as well as definitely the cult element. And I should have anticipated my expectations being upset in some way, because like with Bunny, this is a very odd narrative and it makes narrative choices that I was not expecting. So the novel is broken up into like six sections, I say, because as I was reading through, I was anticipating a more straightforward five-act structure based on the sections, but I clearly didn't flip ahead to see that last section. And so we clearly have some segmentation of action and structure here. And I'm very interested. I haven't fully unpacked what we're doing there. A lot of the sections end on a similar kind of flashback beat because because while this narrative, you know, is set in the present of this tragedy that has upset Belle's life and her going back and kind of reevaluating her relationship with her mother in a lot of ways, that means that a lot of the book is actually told through flashback. And so there is a lot of action that is going back to explore this kind of break in the relationship between Belle and her mother. And there's a lot of disassociation in the narrative in relation to this complex exploration because we are being told everything through Belle's point of view. And she is a kind of quintessentially unreliable narrator. And we start with her as she's kind of hidden herself away in her mother's bathroom during a party, a celebration of life that her business partner has thrown in honor of her mother. And we find her in this bathroom smoking a cigarette and watching skincare videos. And Belle's infatuation and reliance on this particular skincare influencer is definitely explored here. There is a really dangerously tinged parasocial relationship here, not in a way that she necessarily talks like she feels like she knows this influencer as a friend, but in a way that this person behind the screen is influencing all of these pieces of her life and the way that Belle's personality is kind of susceptible to this. She is obsessed with skincare. And we get into this, we go back there. This is obviously a widespread and complex exploration of beauty culture, but even as it's an exploration of beauty culture, it's also an exploration of intergenerational trauma and the complex relationships between mothers and daughters kind of framed through this idea of beauty and how beauty is a currency. And I would say this exploration of intergenerational trauma is more at the forefront than the cult angle ends up being to me, but we'll get into that. But I found this exploration of this parasocial relationship really interesting and it paints this picture right off the bat that something is wrong, further kind of compounded by her listing out her intense skincare regimen with these really outlandish kind of product names that is a little bit, well, a lot satire of kind of our current obsessions. And in some ways, I think it does veer a little too far down that route sometimes because I get over like these really outlandish names, but it is very pointed. And language is utilized throughout the book like this. If you are looking for something that has more synonyms for shades of red than Taylor Swift's Maroon, this may be the book for you. I mean, Maroon may still win out in the end, but there 
there is a lot here. I could probably, if I wanted to, which I don't, to be fair, do a whole Burkean analysis of this book, kind of analyzing potentially references to different shades of red in different sections. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know that it's that particular. Like I don't know if we move through a color spectrum through the course of the book, but how interesting would that have been? And then as we get further into the book, we kind of explore this idea of word replacement and the way that these treatments that Belle is receiving at this particular spa that her mother went to and she is being offered free treatments at, how those are kind of messing with her mind, a mind that was already kind of unreliable to us as a narrator again, and we are starting to lose that sense of self with her as she is our main point of view. And I found that so interesting narratively, especially because I at least as a reader had the sense that there was something more going on the whole time. We as readers really weren't ever fully trusting of Belle's perspective and how she was seeing things. But then it becomes even worse as those memories and her sense of self are stripped away and how this kind of conformity to beauty does strip away our sense of self is definitely a part of that, especially because colorism and exoticism is explored here. We have Belle whose father was Egyptian and her mother is described very much in relation to Snow White by Belle herself. And so at least in Belle's mind, there's definitely this holding up of whiter skin. And even in these spa treatments that she ends up receiving later in the narrative, there is an emphasis on brightening and the glow, which as is relayed through Belle's point of view that we kind of have to wade through a little bit, right? It read to me like some of this was skin lightening. And so in these flashbacks of Belle kind of exploring her relationship with her mother when she was younger and always being focused on this idea of beauty, partly because she is seeing that from her mother, she is also kind of exhibiting Belle a preference for lighter skin through seeing her mother as beautiful and what is reflected to her as beauty. And we'll go back to reflections. But her mother is describing her as beautiful and saying that she doesn't need all of these beauty treatments that her mother needs, which to Belle is kind of reinforcing her idea that she isn't beautiful, even I believe as her mother is trying to frame it as she is more beautiful, but also then still obsessed with her own image and the way that she does things like buy a hairbrush that she can use for her daughter that doesn't work with her daughter's hair type and so her daughter can't use it and so then there is this differentiation and Belle sees herself as lesser than her mother in some ways even as her mother is holding her up in her language even as she is undermining her in a lot of her other language calling her sunshine in a way that Belle says is making fun of her more serious demeanor. So this is all kind of part of the flashback because we have a sense that there is some breaking of this relationship. When Belle goes back, she doesn't seem to really know her mother well. There is some rift there. And at first it feels solely made of this idea of this kind of beauty perception, both the way that Belle perceives Noelle as beautiful and how Noelle's perceived beauty has allowed her to move through the world differently than Belle, but also Belle's newer obsession with skincare, even as it's kind of indicated later in the narrative that she is also taking on some of these treatments. And of course, then going to the spa that is very cult-like, very odd, but we don't get to spend all that much time in the culty spa. I would have liked more time in the culty spa because there are times that the narrative does kind of drag a little bit in the middle. And part of that is that this is such an isolated narrative in the sense that Belle is a very isolated character and we are seeing everything through her point of view. And it's such a character driven internal book that we really are kind of stuck. And stuck probably is more of a negative connotation than I mean, but it is not necessarily action driven. So if you're looking for something that's really action driven, Driven in its exploration of a cult with this kind of odd on the side as well. This may not be your thing because it's really more the cult is an odd outside actor metaphor for all of the internal stuff that Belle really needs to work through and a kind of instigator for the processing of this trauma that happened in her childhood. And part of the way it succeeds in this exploration is it is wiping her mind in some ways, taking some memories and talking and framing this as how it makes things so much easier. This idea of this kind of bling 
blank slate, but also the sprinkling of toxic positivity in it, taking everything to its heightened, kind of odd, misshapen form, but still reflecting something that is very recognizable in our kind of modern moment. And for Belle, these bad memories being wiped definitely involve reflections and another kind of odd supernaturally element of the narrative. There's definitely a lot that you have to kind of take on faith here, especially in relation to the cult and some of the ways that these things are happening. The mechanics aren't super evident, but again, it's operating more as metaphor. So while I definitely would have loved to explore it more, I kind of understand. Again, we do get kind of bogged down in it. And I'll talk, remind me to talk about the pacing here again. So we go back in these flashbacks and it relates back to this this idea of how Belle is seeing herself. And so when her mother is going off, her mother is an aspiring actor and has all of these boyfriends that don't necessarily treat Belle the best and how Belle views her mother prioritizing this over her. And there's a whole lot of complexity there that's almost on the sidelines that Belle isn't really interrogating as deeply. But we as readers can see the complexity there. And so when her mother is going off on these dates, she is sneaking into her mother's room, even though she's been told not to, to put on her shoes and her second best lipstick and look at herself in her mother's mirror, which I believe is cracked. It's cracked later. All of her mirrors are cracked later. There is definitely this emphasis on the mirrors and the cracking of mirrors. That is part of the Snow White element, is being able to look into a mirror and have someone talk back to you. Because Belle looks into the mirror and someone talks back to her. She thinks it's Tom Cruise. Is it really Tom Cruise? No. But she sneaks into her mother's room consistently to talk to this mysterious mirror man. And while her mother is frequently yelling at her and punishing her not to go into her room, it's unclear whether she knows what is going on with that mirror, even though the mirror is turned to the back of the closet. Or at least I found it somewhat ambiguous because it could be this idea of what she is seeing in her own reflection, or maybe it's the idea that the mirror is talking to her as well. So there's a couple different ways that could go. But this mirror man is basically feeding this really dark part of Belle, making her insecure, really building her up while tearing her mother down. And I found this particularly interesting partly because I wasn't expecting the narrative to go in this direction and I found it hard not to look at this as a kind of metaphor or an exploration of the ease of online predation for young girls and the messages young girls are getting about themselves and their bodies and with this man there is this emphasis on purity and kind of simplicity he is talking down about these things that her mother does like her red lipstick like her shoes that adults or grown women may utilize to express their sexuality. And so it's this really holding up both of this idea of natural beauty, but also this innocence. And I'm finding it hard to place the words right now, but just simply the fact that Belle is underage. And so it's hard to look at that and not think of a lot of the messages that young girls are getting today. And honestly, the ease of it even for Belle in her flashbacks and the messages we were getting at the time in the 2000s and the kind of wild west of the internet. And I'm not pretending it's a safe place now by any means, but how we didn't always really know who we were talking to too, right? And so I think that that's part of it, or at least that's part of what I took from that plot line. But while focusing on this, it ends up kind of leading to Belle's corruption, the corruption of her sense of self and her youth and innocence at the beginning of this, I really think are further emphasized by her insistence in calling this man Tom Cruise and believing this man is Tom Cruise and that idea of young people on the internet believing they are interacting with certain people, but then how that twists her. And it's of course further compounded by that complex relationship with her mother, which is only becoming more fraught as Belle comes into her own and comes of age within these flashbacks. And the idea of mirrors carry back into the present in the book in the idea that the mirrors in Noelle's home are cracked at Belle constantly looking at her reflection, whether it's to pick it apart at the beginning or as she starts to admire herself as these procedures go on. And one of my favorite lines in the book says, a mirror is only a mirror, Belle. It only reflects back what we desire and long for. And I think that that is probably one of the theses of the book. That's probably one of the main explorations that is going on here. And this idea 
of what is being reflected back to us. And so that is part of why this book is so internal and so character driven. But that is also then going back to that pacing, I actually remembered why sometimes the pacing stalls in this. There are sections in the middle where it feels like we are kind of caught in this loop, especially after Belle starts losing her mind a little bit with these procedures, because we don't know where we're going. We don't have this sense of the cult. Belle doesn't have a very strong sense of self. She's in this unknown place. And so we don't really have much to grasp onto. And as a reader, I couldn't help feeling a little adrift at times. At the same time, I also couldn't help wondering, and I mean, it probably was, that that was incredibly purposeful. That at this point, Awad has the kind of reputation that allows her to kind of go on this journey and make it a little bit more cyclical, kind of unsettle the reader, make us sit in that discomfort, because that helps further the exploration of the book. And especially because it's not really attacking the thing head on or attacking the thing in the way that we may expect, or at least that I expected. And so in some ways, it's refusing to play into expectations and beauty expectations even within its form. And that isolation leaves a lot of open-ended questions for me, like is it exploring, and probably to some extent all of it, right? Exploring the kind of isolation of beauty or how beauty culture leaves us isolated, even as it's looking at this idea of beauty and beauty being a currency. But again, we are seeing all of this through Belle's perspective. We also have this character in the book in the form of her mother's business partner, which Belle often judges and looks down on, especially in relation to the changes in the shop that she's made. Belle thinks that all of the dresses look like sacks and judges, kind of the perception of beauty even there. And yet this woman also has the surest sense of self. And even when there is this seeming judgment or resentment or anger from Belle toward her in the narrative, she is still trying to act with grace, especially when Belle is coming into the shop and kind of acting erratically or causing issues for her. She is being firm. She is doing what she has to do as a businesswoman, but there still seems to be some care in that response. And so these outside elements kind of sneak in. Speaking of outside elements and touching on just briefly, there's also a character that is seemingly attempting to infiltrate this group, kind of trying to get closer to Belle because he recognizes that in her being chosen by this group, that's not a good thing and that she is in real and immediate danger. But because Belle's perspective is so fraught and so fragmented, we don't really get to explore that as deeply. It's almost kind of like this side thing happening. I mean, that's what side plots are, but you know what I mean. It's not as fully developed as I expected or I wanted, but again, those were real specific narrative choices that have very specific intent behind them. So I'm left or attempting to ponder it more than be like annoyed by it. Also to go back to choices that have intent that I don't always seemingly understand or I think go on a little too long, like with all the references to all the different skin treatments. I think I mentioned earlier this thing in the book as it goes on, as these treatments go on, that everyday kind of mundane words get switched out for sinister words and things with negative connotations, dangerous connotations. And it is this real kind of easy movement to it. And we see it first with Belle's mother. So when Belle starts to do it, we recognize that something is wrong and also just the nature of it feels wrong. But it did start to go on a little long for me, or at least it potentially felt a little forced because it felt a little too on the nose. Maybe this idea of beauty and as she's becoming more beautiful, it's contrasted by this ugliness inside and this kind of internal ugliness that has an outward manifestation with in speech, maybe, if you have different interpretations for that or can unpack that in a more meaningful way, please let me know because it is very specific and I don't know that I caught all of the intent there. Because also the message of this book is clearly not beauty above all is a good thing. So there is a lot to unpack here. There is a lot to ponder. There is a lot of stillness and subtlety here. Like I said, it's very much a character driven internal kind of dangerously tinged novel. It has a real sense of escalation. The danger kind of builds and part of the way that does build is through things like the slipping of language and the way that language is utilized. So I definitely can't hate it by any means. But if you've read this, I would be so interested to hear your kind of interpretation, what you think this is exploring, what you thought of its execution. But let me know what you're thinking. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. Would love to have you hear more read something good and yeah bye